still believe you're the same. Come on. Yesterday and forever. Let that declaration be made known. Still believe for me. Out of your spirit, just begin to worship the Lord. Just begin to exalt and magnify his name. Come on, let's let the Lord know that his presence is welcome here today. We're not come here today to seek our own agenda, but to pursue after him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our being tonight. We purpose we're going after you, Lord. Come on, let's begin to magnify the Lord. Lift up praises unto his name. Come on, let's exalt and magnify the Lord Most High. For the Lord Most High is awesome indeed. He is the great King over all the earth. There's none like Him. There's none greater than Him. And we exalt Him. And we bless Him today for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Now begin to thunderously applaud. Thunderously applaud. Come on, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Praise be unto His name. Now stretch your hands out towards our city, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we bless the city of Louisville. And Lord, the anointing and the power we sense here, we release it right now. May it flow up and down every street. May it go into every home. May it touch every family member. Lord, those that are bound, oppressed, tormented, may they be liberated right now in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we pray today for our mayor, Greg Fisher. Lord, give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, may he be the greatest mayor we've ever had. May he have a heart for you in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for those that serve in leadership capacity. Lord, may there be integrity, honesty, and purity, Lord, in the leaders of this city. We bind corruption in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Lord, we bless the pastors of this city. Lord, may there be a fresh anointing come upon them. Lord, may they be stirred in their spirit, God, to seek after you and pursue you. Lord, may they stand in their pulpits today and preach the uncompromising word of God. May they reprove, rebuke, and exhort in Jesus' name. May there be an open heaven over our city. May multitudes be born again in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, we bless the United States of America. And Lord, we pray, God, move by your spirit. Move upon our president. Draw him unto yourself. May he be a man, Lord, that has a heart for you. Lord, may you visit him, O oh God. And Lord, may he begin to seek after you, Lord God, with all that is within him. Lord, we cry out for revival in America. We pray the Spirit of God would begin to flow. The glory of God would be released upon this land. That we would once again be one nation under God. In Jesus' mighty name, for the glory of God. Now, lift your right hand to the Lord. Now I want you to declare this with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I declare with all my heart that I belong to you. And I purpose this day to be in your will and to fulfill your plan. In Jesus' mighty name, I receive a fresh anointing of your powerful Holy Spirit that's resting upon me in a way greater today than it ever has been before an anointing to lead people to you an anointing to be fruitful i declare signs wonders and miracles they follow me everywhere i go in jesus mighty name for the glory of god now join hands with the person next to you and continue this prayer and say i bless you in jesus name May the hand of God be upon you. May it be upon your family. In Jesus' name, may you be strengthened. May you be encouraged. May you be built up and edified. In Jesus' name, I release an anointing that would cause you to prevail, to succeed, and to overcome. In Jesus' name. 
This is your greatest hour. God shall do mighty things on your behalf this day. So expect, so anticipate divine intervention from Almighty God in Jesus' name. It's coming now. It's coming now. It's coming now. Now begin to praise Him. Begin to praise Him. Come on, begin to bless Him. Come on. Mountains, be removed. Walls, come down. Enemies, be scattered. In Jesus' mighty name, we declare it. We prophesy it. Breakthroughs, turnarounds. In Jesus' mighty name. So I receive that. I'm walking in that all the days of my life. I can't lose. I'm going to win. I can't be defeated. I'm going to prevail. I'll never go under. I'm going over. God's got great things for me and my family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. One more time, let's give God a big praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Don't you just sense God's presence? Don't you just sense God's power? Amen. I almost feel sorry for the devil. Almost. Turn around, shake hands with somebody. Tell them that you love them. Ushers, if you would come at this time and begin to pass out the communion. God bless you, Pastor Chad, as you come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's just give the Lord a little more praise, can we, today? Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we believe in you. We love you today, Lord. We magnify you, lift you up today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Around here we say that you don't have to be a member of this local church to participate in communion, but that you just be part of the Lord's church. Have his name written across your heart. Have the, his precious blood applied to the doorpost and the lintels of your heart. How many of you here today know that you're bought with a precious price, with the precious blood of Jesus? I want to read a passage of scripture while the elements are being distributed to you. John 10 and 10 says this, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. How many of you are thankful for abundant life in Jesus this morning? In the Amplified, it says, I came that you might have and actually enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. I don't know about you, but I could stand to have a life that's overflowing with joy and abundance and provision and prosperity and the favor of God. How many of you want your cup to run over with those things? Praise God. What a thought that our Jesus, in Galatians 2 and 20, we're, we say that we are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not we, but Christ live in us. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and, listen to this, gave himself for me. What a thought that our Jesus, our precious Redeemer, our eternal Savior, our King of glory, that bright and morning star, would love us enough to literally give himself for us. And we take this moment to honor that. What a sacrifice of love and blessing. For our sakes, he became poor that we might become rich. Aren't you thankful? He endured a sacrifice that we might have salvation. Because he endured, we can have eternal life. Because he suffered pain, we get to have a purpose. A purpose to live and a purpose to love and a purpose to be. A purpose for existence on this earth. I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful that God is the master craftsman. 
He's taken full control. He molds us. He shapes us. He orders our steps. How many of you are glad you don't have to figure it all out, but if you rest yourself in him, he orders your steps according to his will. All you've got to do is trust and obey and walk according to the steps that he lays out. Trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. What a plan. What a purpose. What a plan that he has for our lives, for salvation, for healing, for blessing, for prosperity. It's an intention that God has to raise us up to new heights in him. And that's to be our norm and not the exception. Amen? Amen. If you're still waiting to be served, wave at an usher. They'll make sure that you get these elements right now. We're about to pray as we celebrate abundant life in Jesus. I'm glad today for his life, for his death, for his burial and his resurrection, and that because of Jesus, we can live a life by design and not just a life by default. That was a word for somebody, if you'll grab it. You have a life by design. You don't have to live it by default. Lord, we thank you right now. We praise you for shedding your blood and giving your life as a sacrifice for us. Lord, we walk with you every day with faith and hope and expectation for a brighter future, a better tomorrow than today. And we know that in you it's only going to get better and better and our best days lie straight ahead in Jesus' mighty name. Take and eat of that bread and drink of the cup. Amen. book there's a seed of prosperity there's the seed of healing there is the seed of breakthroughs in Jesus name as you remain standing please turn with me to the book of first Kings chapter 21 and I'm going to begin reading from first Kings 21 if you don't have a Bible move over to somebody who does and you'll be able to read with them the words of God. I want to begin reading in verse 27. It says, And it came to pass when Ahab heard those words that he rent his clothes, put sackcloth upon his flesh, and fasted. And he took, he lay in sackcloth and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishite, Tishbite, saying, See thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me. Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. Father, anoint your word with great power in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. This is the 21st day of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. I remember when my father passed away, I was working with my dad. I'd worked with him for a number of years, and then I had gone on the evangelistic field. I, uh, we had started Channel 21, and I was evangelizing. And I had been working with him on a couple of projects. And on that day, we were to meet with some attorneys about the refinancing of our church. Our company that had financed us had gone into receivership. And so with uh, not having anything to do with us, but it caused every one of their loans to go into default. And so... We were to have met with the attorneys, and he had a heart attack and died. So I came from the hospital, and I met with the attorneys. We worked that out till about 6 o'clock that night. And I uh, became the pastor here at the church. And there, our church was facing some incredible situations. 
And I didn't know what to do, and the Lord spoke to me to fast for 21 days. It was a miracle what happened after that time of fasting. So the next year, we came to this time, and I asked the church to join us in fasting, and actually 15 people out of our congregation fasted with us 21 days. I see some of those people here, including uh, John uh, Isaacs over here to my left. He's our accountant. But that year, God did even greater miracles. There were 32 people that were healed of cancer. And so the next year, 100 people joined us, and then several hundred people joined us, and then 500 people joined us, and it just began to grow until now. There are thousands of churches across the world that are fasting for 21 days. I have been invited to Korea, to Africa, to places all over the world to share about fasting and prayer. And it just began to multiply, and others have picked up the banner, and some preach it a lot better than I do. But God did use us as a seed to begin a real fasting movement. But when you come to the last day, and I have discovered some secrets about fasting, and I want to share some of those things. I didn't read this in a book, but I want to share out of my heart a revelation that God gave me and he gave it to me on the 15th day of my fast, which I started on the 1st. So it was the 15th day on January the 15th of 2015 as I was reading Genesis chapter 15. There's a lot of 15s in there. If you take uh, 3 times 5, that equals 15. The number 5 is the number of grace. It was David who picked up five small stones and God helped him to conquer Goliath, the giants in his life. Three is the number of perfection. It is a, it's a time that God is going to bring divine, uh, divine intervention to allow the people of God to accomplish great events a time when God is going to allow us to uh, do things that we've never done before, happenings, acts, that only could come through the miracles of God. And God spoke that to me, and then God showed me five things that was going to happen this year. The first thing that God showed me that this was going to be a time that God elevates people. This is going to be a time that God promotes you. He's going to elevate you in your career, in your work, your profession. He's going to ele elevate and fulfill your goals and your dreams. This is a time that you need to teach children to, big, to dream big dreams because God is going to bring it to pass and it's going to come by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Ark of the Covenant, or, or excuse me, the Ark that Noah built has 15 written all over it. It was 15 cubits high. It uh, was a sign of, of protection. It was a time when the whole world was in a storm, yet Noah was high and dry. The name that Pharaoh gave Joseph when he became the prime minister is a 15-lettered name that no person can pronounce. It is a, a sign that God is in the promotion business. God took him from the jailhouse to the White House. And it's a time when people who have been born in other countries, particularly, I'm not talking about illegals that escaped here, but I'm talking about people who God opened the door for you to come to this country. God brought you here for you to be blessed and to prosper. And this is a time God is going to elevate you and bless you in Jesus' name. The second thing the Lord showed me was that this is a year of breakthroughs in medicine and research that will bring cures to types of cancers and to uh, diabetes. Hezekiah in the Bible, he was granted 15 more years. God extended his life. 
There was a, a, a fig polis that Isaiah told him to use. So evidently he had some type of cancer. And I've often thought that the secret to cancer lies in the figs. But God extended his life for 15 more years. In Genesis 15, 15, raise your right hand. Say Genesis 15, 15. So that's my favorite scripture. It says this, And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. It's a promise that God is going to extend your life. You're not going to die before your time. You're not going to be sent to a nursing home where you can't figure out what you ate, if you ate, who you are, where you are. But it's a time that God is going to bless you and strengthen you and heal your body. Can I hear an amen? amen. The third promise that God gave me is this. Even though this is the season of the four blood moons and we are right now halfway into this cycle of these uh, four blood moons. And even though it is what it is, it's a time of blood, it's a time of chaos in the whole world of bloodshed and violence, God is releasing angels of protection. Angels that will protect you so a knife won't cut you, a gun won't shoot you, and fire will not burn you. In the Bible, the Jews were delivered from death under Esther on the 15th day of the month. Paul's ship was anchored safely in 15 fathoms and God says, not one member of this ship will be lost, but I'm going to give you every one of the souls on this ship. And this is a sign to you that God is going to protect you and keep you in Jesus' name. Can I hear an amen? amen. The fourth revelation that God showed me was found in Genesis 4, 15. And God gave Abraham a vision. And in that vision... God showed him that his seed, not yet born, would journey to Egypt and they would, be, they would be slaves in Egypt for 400 years. But afterwards, they would be brought out with great wealth and they would prosper. God showed him that on the 15th day of Nisan. And then the exodus took place when they came out of Egypt after 400 years on the 15th day of Nisan. And then when Jesus was crucified and he was placed in the tomb, again, it was on the 15th day of Nisan. And 15 is a sign of God's deliverance and God's breakthrough power. The Bible says he brought him forth with silver and with gold and there was not a feeble one amongst the tribe. Hallelujah. How many of you would like to come out this year with more money than you when you went in? And how many would like to come out feeling 10 years younger than you do right now? Hallelujah. Well, this is a time of great breakthroughs and great deliverance in the name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen. Then the fifth breakthrough God showed me had to do with women. And the Bible is it, it's very interesting, but it talks about the 10 most um, frequently mentioned women in the Bible. Two of those women, Miriam and Abigail, are mentioned 15 times. And as I was reading that, the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to promote women. Women who are professional women, who have talents, who have careers, women who are salespeople. But it seems like there are those that have just held them back. Well, God's going to remove those people, just like Haman was removed when Esther was the queen. God's going to remove anything and anybody who's held you back. And this is a time of promotion and uh, being greatly blessed in the name of the Lord. As a sign, the Lord spoke to me that both political parties will have women on their presidential tickets. And I believe that this is a time, ladies, to look to the, to the top because that's where God wants you to go in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. The text that we read today from 1 Kings is about the most evil king and the most evil queen that ever lived in Israel. Here's what the Bible says, and Ahab 
did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Can you imagine of all the mean and ugly and terrible people, this fella, his star is more bright than anyone else in the person that God doesn't like. And so this man and his wife, not only were they worshipers of Baal, he came from bad stock. His dad was king, King Omri. He was evil. And then he arranged a marriage with Jezebel, who was the daughter of a witch doctor who worshipped this pagan god Baal. And so as uh, he married her, what he couldn't think of, she did. And there was nothing but evil in that kingdom. Well, they had a, a piece of property, and next door to their property, there was a righteous man by the name of Naboth. Naboth had a vineyard, and they went to him and asked him to sell the vineyard, and he refused to do so. This land was granted to me all the way back to the times of Joshua when he came here into the land of promise. It has been handed down from generations to generation, and I cannot sell it. And so they became very angry. They felt like they had offered him a fair price, and they had the right to remove him. So they began to think up lies, and they had men to testify in court that he had uh, done evil things that he totally was innocent of, and he was taken out and stoned to death. And so the day after this, this um, uh, lynching took place, Naboth was out there walking on the land. And God spoke to one of his prophets. He spoke to Elijah. And Elijah came and Elijah said, Ahab, in the place where the dogs lick the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood. Behold, I will bring evil upon you and will take away thy posterity. The dogs will eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. And if they die in the city, the dogs will eat them. And if they die in the field, the fowls will devour them. And the Bible says that when Ahab heard this message, that he tore his clothing, dressed in burlap and fasted. He even slept in burlap and went about in deep mourning. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah saying, Have you seen how Ahab has humbled himself before me? Because he's humbled himself before me, I will not bring the disaster in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the disaster upon his house. When I read that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, if God will answer the prayers of an evil king, Ahab, who fasted and humbled himself, how much more will he answer the prayers of the righteous in this room who have fasted and asked God for miracles in their lives. Can I hear an amen? amen. Hold your hand up high. Say with me, how much more? How much more, how much more, how much more will God answer my prayers if he answered Ahab's prayers? The word of the Lord says, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more? Shall your Father in heaven give good gifts to them that ask him? I'm here to declare to you, this is a season of great answers to prayer. We don't back up. We don't blink. We don't stutter. We speak it like it is. God is here to do miracles in your life. He's here to answer your prayers. And if you don't get a prayer answered, it's because you're not praying. If you've got enough faith to pray, then that's all the faith it takes to get the answer in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God's going to answer prayers of businesses and starting businesses. God's going to answer prayers of healing. God's going to answer prayers for your family. This is a season for miracles and answered prayer. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Up north, there was a pastor. That pastor went to pray for a sister in his church. She lived in a very uh, difficult part of town, a lot of crime there. He got there late at night and parked his car. He walked across the street. 
he went into her home. He prayed for her. And then about two months later, he had the opportunity to preach a service at the local jail. There was a man who attended that meeting and came up afterwards and he said, I, I recognize you and uh, I wanted to tell you this story. I was there the night you went to visit this lady over off of Elm Street. Said, I was going to rob you. And as I was standing in the darkness and getting ready to attack you as you crossed the street, suddenly there was a sensation that came on my body and my right arm became paralyzed. I couldn't move it. And when that happened, of course, I just disappeared into the darkness and now I've been arrested on another crime and that's why I'm here. But I just want you to know somebody was looking out for you. Well, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. I said, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. Years ago, I was down in Costa Rica and we were getting ready to go into Nicaragua. And uh, we had our television equipment and cameras and we were in a shop. And a lady came up to me out of the blue. She spoke English and she said, I overheard these three men talking about robbing you when you left the shop. And about that time, these three men, I saw them, they left the shop. And so the fellows that were with me said, well, what should we do? I said, well, let's buy us a machete. So I bought this machete and I said, stick close. And I came out waving my machete and the others went and, and uh, hailed a cab and we jumped in the cab. But God warned us in the name of the Lord. When you begin to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, God will direct your life. And God will protect you when you don't even know you're being protected. Years ago, there was a doctor and his wife that attended this church. He was a surgeon. And on a Sunday morning, my father, who was pastoring then, had them testify. And uh, they told how God had uh, directed them and led their lives. Well, there was a lady in the service that had received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Her husband was a principal out in Bullock County. And she would visit occasionally. And uh, she had been, she was summoned to be on a jury. She was chosen for this trial. And in the trial, the doctor who had given his testimony that Sunday was being sued. It was a nuisance case. There was a lady who had been operated on and she was allergic to the powder that the gloves were stored in. And she was now suing the doctor for this allergic reaction. And so when it went to the jury, she uh, first she was sitting there and she said, I, I think maybe I should tell them that I'm disqualified to take this case because... Uh, I heard him in the church give his testimony. But the Lord spoke to her and said, no, I placed you on this jury and you are just to stay put and I'll give you the words to say. When they began to try to come up with a verdict, it seemed like everyone was wanted to just put it to this doctor, just destroy his reputation. All those people, those doctors, those big shots. And then the Holy Spirit says, now is the time for you to speak. She began to talk. She began to share with them how he totally was innocent in this matter. And as she began to share, it totally turned the jury till he was, he was acquitted and there was no damage that ever went to his reputation. How many know that is the work of the Lord? Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise clap today. Hallelujah. I read the story about a surgeon. He was Jewish. And uh, it was during the Civil War. He lived in New York. And he ended up joining the Union forces. And he was worked the, the, the Battle of, of uh, Gettysburg. That was one of the bloodiest battles that was ever fought. Uh, during the Civil War, more people died. Almost 600,000 Americans died in that one war. But they rushed the severe cases to him that he operated on first. 
Many of them would have to be amputated, their legs or their arms, and there were 23 that were going to die if he didn't do something quickly, and so they were his first priority. And one of those was a young boy. His name was Charlie, Charlie Colson. He had been too young to be a soldier, and so he had joined as a drummer boy, and he had just turned 17. He'd only been in the, the military for three months, and he, they thought he was dead, and uh, he wasn't, and uh, he had to have his arm and leg amputated. And so the, the, the doctors tried to give him chloroform, and he refused it. And so when they wouldn't take no for an answer, he asked to speak to the surgeon, and the surgeon came, and he said to him, he said, when I was nine years old, I asked the Lord into my life, and the Lord's going to be with me, and I won't cry, I won't, uh, I won't make it hard on you. You go ahead and remove my leg and my arm, and I'll make it through this. He said, well, son, um, uh, let me give you some brandy or some whiskey to help uh, ease the pain. He said, well, when I was five years old, my mother laid her hands on me, and she prayed that no strong drink or alcohol would ever touch my lips. My dad was an alcoholic, and he died an alcoholic, and I've never touched any, any strong drink like that, and I, and I don't want that either. He said, the Lord will help me, and Jesus will see me through. He said, well, son, would you, would you like to talk to the chaplain? He said, I'd love to talk to the chaplain. So the chaplain came and prayed with Charlie, and Charlie said, you know, if, if for some reason I don't make it through this, he said, I have a Bible underneath my pillow. I've read it every day, and I want you to send it to my mother and tell her I've been faithful to the Lord. And so he said, I, I'll, I'll do that. Well, after the surgery, or while they were doing the surgery, Charlie, he bit into the pillow, and he could, the doctor could hear his words, Jesus, help me get through this. And those words were something that doctor could never forget. And even though he had 27 other amputations and surgeries that day, that night he couldn't sleep. All he could think of was Charlie. So the next morning he came over to the hospital and the nurse said, you had 12 of those patients die. And he said, what about Charlie? Did he, did he not make it? He said, no, he made it. He made it through. And so he went over and he talked to Charlie. How are you doing, son? He said, I'm, I'm doing good. And he said, I know you're a Jewish doctor, but I sure wish you would meet my best friend who's a Jew. He said, who's that? He says, it's Jesus. And he says, well, we're going to try to get you through this, uh, Charlie. But within uh, a few more days, Charlie died. And so the years passed, and this Jew had been raised to really hate Christians. And he uh, finally realized that something was missing in his life. And during that time, almost 10 years later now, a Christian doctor led him to Christ. And he accepted the Lord. Well, uh, almost two years passed after that, and he went to a prayer meeting. He was in New York, and this lady gave her testimony. She says, uh, I've been given a bad report from my doctor that I'm not going to live very long. I've got congestion in my lungs, but I'm ready to go to heaven. My son, his name was Charlie, and Charlie was in the war, and he died. And I've read his Bible that the chaplain sent home. I've read it every day. And there was a notation in his Bible that he was praying for a Jewish doctor to be saved. And he said, I'm going to see my son when I die, and I cannot wait. Well, this so touched this surgeon. He got up, and he walked across the room. He says, well... I'm that Jewish doctor, and the Lord answered Charlie's prayers. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah. If God would answer the prayers of Ahab, 
when he fasted and when he prayed, how much more will God answer our prayers in the name of Jesus? I feel that as we've come to the end of this 21 days, that God has given me that word for you to stand and believe on those five promises to happen in your life. The promises of promotion and elevation and upgrade like Joseph did, of a long life and cures to diseases like Hezekiah's life was extended, a protection like God gave Esther and the Apostle Paul, like uh, God uh, uh, broke the bondages like they did when they came in the Exodus, of women being elevated like Miriam and Abigail. I believe this is the season for that to happen. And what takes place at the end of a fast is you plant a seed. I, I learned that through the, through the revelation of the Holy Spirit of the hundredfold blessing. God said he would bless us 30, 60, and 100 fold. And the three duties of every believer are found in Matthew 6 when you pray, when you give, and when you fast. If you pray, you get a reward, but it's a 30-fold blessing. If you pray, you plant a seed, well, you get the blessing of prayer, and then you get the blessing of a seed planted. It becomes a 60-fold blessing. But the way you get a 100-fold blessing is when you fast, when you give, and when you, when you pray. If you fast here, and you've participated in this fast, or you've been involved in this fast, and you don't plant a seed, the person who loses is you. You lose a blessing that it can only be received when you, you combine those three duties and that God has ordained, to give, to pray, and to fast. So today, we plant a seed. We plant a seed as unto the Lord, and I'm asking for those who could plant a seed a $500 or more to stand to your feet and to come right down here to the front because I want to pray for you and I want to release these blessings that God spoke to me into your life. I want you to come now. I want you to gather in just as close as you can and we're going to believe that God is going to do miracles in your life. I want you to come very quickly. Years ago, there was a couple in our church. They, their names were Ricky and Melissa, Melissa Shapiro. They uh, came from a terrible background. Neither one of them ever knew their parents or knew their father, at least. And they fasted, uh, they fasted for 21 days. Then they planted a seed, just like I've asked you to do. And when they planted that seed that night... Ricky had a dream. In that dream, I came to him with a crown. And I took this crown off of my head. It had $10,000 on that crown. And I placed it upon his head. Then this date came out, April the 1st. So he woke his wife up, Melissa. Here's what happened. She said, well, that's a sign. God is going to do something for us. Well, that week, she said, you know, I feel like the Lord wants me to go see my dad. I haven't seen him since I was a little kid. He lives in Richmond, uh, Virginia, and she drove there. And it was an emotional time. She got there, and the dad uh, cried. He said, honey, Melissa said, I, I, I just didn't know where you were. Your mother left. She never let me know. I've saved for your college education. I've got $10,000 in the bank. Well, that was a part of that dream. And then also said, uh, I, I gave for child support. And they went down to the courthouse and they said, oh, we're going to divide this child support between you and your brother, but it'll be April the 1st before we can get that out. Well, that next Sunday, he shared that. He shared that testimony. And it was such a tremendous uh, time. It was, he shared it in the second service. And that service was broadcast live on Channel 21. Well, they went back to their seats, and then in a little bit, an usher came and got Ricky, and he went out to the back. A man was waiting for him. Are you Ricky Shapiro? Yes. 
I saw you on television. I saw you give your testimony. I'm your dad. And he had not seen his son since he was a month old. And what was so amazing, his father was a member of this church. He went to another service. But how many know that was a miracle? Hallelujah. How many are saying, Pastor, I would like to plant that 500 seed, but I don't have it. But if God would give it to me, I would do it. I'd give that $500. And, and between now and Easter, I'm going to believe God to give me that $500 so I can be a part of it. I want you to come and stand with these that are right here. Come very quickly. Come very quickly. I believe there are teenagers. There are housewives. There are business people who want to be a part of this. Because there's breakthroughs that happen. And I want to encourage you to give a seed that'll stretch you a little bit. A seed that'll, will cause you to release your faith to believe the Lord. And I'll be honest with you, God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you and you will not even miss this seed because God is going to give so much more back to you it's, it's like investing a thousand and getting back a whole lot more in the market. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I believe the Lord is speaking to people who've never given $500 before. But you want to be a part of this. I just want you to come. Hallelujah. Now, of you that are here, how many say, Pastor Bob, I feel like the Lord maybe wants me to take a step farther. And I'm going to trust God to give $2,015 between now and Easter. I want you to come up here on the platform and stand with me. Come on up here. If you feel like God is stretching you and you want to give this, as God will bless you, I want you to come up here and stand with me right now, right up here on the platform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say, what happens if, uh, if we don't do it? Well, Margaret and myself are not going to pull up in front of your house and knock on your door. That's not going to happen. But you put yourself in a position that God is going to have to meet you. If God doesn't provide for you, you're not under obligation to give it. Years ago, we had a special speaker. And Margaret, do you remember this? Uh, he, he was going to take an offering. It was the end of 21 days. And, and I said, now, Margaret, he's going to take this offering. And when he does, you get up and run right down to the front. And uh, so I thought he, he was going to do $1,000. Well, he got up there and said, I feel like there's people that are going to give $10,000. Margaret jumped up and ran right down to the front. Do you remember that, Margaret? And when she did... I had a heart attack. The ambulance was called. I recovered after about a month. No, I, I remember I, I got up and I went down and stood there beside her. And I said, why'd you do that? And she said, well, I said, don't you believe God will help us? And I said, and I, you know, and I had been rebuked. I said, yes. And, and, um, and then when we got home, I said, you know what? I said, that's the biggest gift we've ever believed God for. And I said, let's, let's start doing it. And he said, well, you have the whole year. I said, let's don't wait the whole year. Let's get our seed in the ground. And everything I could do, I, I got money and I brought it. It took me three months to pay it off. The week I paid it off, I got a call from a doctor. A Pastor Bob said, I'm trying to buy some real estate. And it's such a, a large a group of apartments, he said, I, I, uh, the bank won't approve me because I don't have any experience with real estate. So would you be my partner? And I've had a lot of experience with real estate. And I said, well, I don't have any money. And I, he said, you don't need any money. I got the money. I need a partner. And I, we became partners. And we bought, we bought uh, 48 units. Then we bought 24 units. Then we bought another 35 units. And it ended up blessing us with hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
And it all was because I did my part. And if you do your part and you do what God tells you to do, it's up to God to do the rest. Can I hear an amen? amen. Anybody else want to join us up here? Anybody else? And how many are here and say, Pastor Bob, uh, I, I don't know if I can give 500 or, but I'll give 100. I want you to come on up here. If you'll give 100, I want you to come and stand. I want you to move in a little closer so there'll be plenty of room for everybody to come. I want you to come right up here. I'll give 100. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many say, Brother Bob, I'll just give the best I can. You come on up here too. I want everybody to get on this blessing because I feel like the Lord is going to release something that's an incredible thing. How many here are professional women? You, you have some type of career as a woman. How many, you're not professional, but you want to be. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Let me tell you, the only difference is you stepping out and starting declaring it in the name of Jesus. Some of the most successful people are not the ones who went to college. Sometimes college will ruin you. It's people who got some get up and go about them. Hallelujah. And if you've got the, the courage, God can bless you in the name of Jesus. I want every woman that wants to be promoted this year, lift your hand up high. Hallelujah. Father, I loose the blessing upon every one of these women. I declare in the name of Jesus, you'll be the head and not the tail. May you make more money than your husband made. Hallelujah. May God prosper you and your husband has to borrow money from you. Just uh, get going. Hallelujah. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Secondly, I declare divine protection, Holy Ghost protection over your family, over your children. In Jesus' name, Lord, protect us from the for the glory of God. Thirdly, I declare in the name of Jesus for promotions and elevation, for our dreams and our goals to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Just like you promoted Joseph, Lord, you're going to promote us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare long life Hallelujah. How many of you are in the medical profession? Hold up your hand if you are, are a nurse or a doctor or in, in the medical profession. In the name of Jesus, Father, I loose the gifts of healing and the working of miracles in the name of the Lord. I declare, I declare for medical science to come up with new avenues that help bring healing. But Holy Ghost, you're the great healer. And may the power of God flow upon your people in Jesus' name. Hallelujah to the Lord. I declare today in the name of Jesus that God is blessing us and bringing deliverance. Lord, this is a year we're going to pay off our, our credit cards. We're going to pay off our car. We're going to pay off our mortgage. We're getting out of debt. Lord, just through the exodus, you brought them forth with silver and with gold. We're going to have more money at the end of the year than we had at the beginning of the year. I speak the blessings of God to fall upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now I want everyone to lift your hand one more time. Say in Jesus' name, Father, you bring in the money. You bring in the finances. I'll not be stingy. You're blessing me in the name of the Lord. And as I give today, it's coming back. It's going to overtake me. For the glory of God, in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a great big praise clap. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, the Lord just really impressed me to do this, to help some of you. When Pastor started mentioning some of these amounts, some of you immediately thought, impossible, can't do it, there's no way. But you're thinking in the natural and God wants to supernaturally manifest and move in your life. Now, the Lord spoke to me to share this testimony. It's been about 15 years ago. It revolutionized my life. A service like this. God 
there, I, I, we had a speaker, and he was saying, I want those that would give $2,000. You know, something in me wanted that to do that with all that was in me. But that seemed an insurmountable amount of money that I could never come up with. And so we gave 10% of that that day. But we agreed that God was going to bring that money in. And within a week, we got a check in the mail for $1,800. God brought all $2,000 in that week. We gave it to God. It revolutionized our life. God started blessing us, prospering us, giving us property. God started doing amazing things. I want to challenge you not to be intimidated, not to be fearful, but to step out in faith. And I know there's a bunch more people that want to come up here right now that would say, I can believe God for $2,000. I want you to come on up here. Come on. Don't be intimidated. Come on. You're here. I know you're here. I know God's moving up on you right now don't be afraid get out of your boat come on get out of your boat we serve a big God we serve a mighty God and he's going to bring it to pass and you're going to testify there's still more don't stop coming there's an anointing here right now God's coming up on you that's it come on they're coming pastor hallelujah you know David I performed the wedding for David and his wife it's the first couple I, I performed, and they didn't have anything. David worked as a, car, as a, a cabinet maker, weren't you? And, uh, and so he began to pray. He made a commitment to pray an hour a day. That year, he led over 600 people to the Lord. And then God called him into the ministry, and he began to went down into the roughest, toughest part of this town and began pastoring a little church. And then God brought him back here, and uh, he began to plant seeds. Didn't have a lot, but planted seeds. Now, David, how many, how many rental houses do you have? Uh, we've got a total of uh, 10. 10 rental houses. And so God knows how to bless you. And God knows how to promote you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord another great big praise clap. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You may return to your seats. You may go and return to your seats. The ushers are going to give everyone here an envelope. And I want you to take that envelope. And I want you to fill it out.